Welcome back, traders and investors. We have it to catch up with Kristen Bentz on her travels here of Talented Blonde LLC. And uh, she is giving me some education on the re in the retail sector. Kristen, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning here. So just wanted to touch on a couple things here. And uh, you just sent me a note here that Tom Ford just launched e-commerce. Exactly. So this is really good news for the luxury space. And as our last you know, conversation um, noted, that's really kind of all the growth that we're seeing right now. So the top end is where you really want to be if you're following retail. Now, Tom Ford was the creative director at Gucci that basically transformed that entire company and the stock and then left. Now, whenever a designer gets bigger than the brand, that's something that you want to pay attention to. And that's what happened over at Coach to give you like another parallel. So Reed Krakow was the creative director at Coach, brought the brand to where it needed to be, and then left and started his own line. So the fact that Tom Ford today, yesterday actually went live with his own e-commerce site, that's a direct-to-consumer link to luxury. That's something that you really want to watch. Um, will probably set the luxury business on fire. A lot of people have been waiting for his stuff. Um, it's a very sexy, very feminine um, uh, attractive. Just pull up my blog and you'll see what I'm talking about. I just sent you the link. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, just talking about these luxury stocks here. I'm just looking at uh, this coach chart here and holy smokes, this has just been really quiet lately. But uh, it looks like it's, yeah. if you can clear this. That's uh, what happens. That's yeah. what happens when you have, you know, the Pied Piper that leaves. And, you know, these two guys really are kind of the fairy dust on these luxury brands. And once they go, Sometimes creative directors, because they're so nuts, get short shrift <laughs> in a company, especially by shareholders. But once they're gone, the stock can really be impacted, and that's always something to watch. Okay. All right. Uh, Nike here. They're, uh, they're getting a little bit active, but not in New York City? <laughs> so the sneaker, we're in a sneaker cycle these days, okay? okay. And there was a, there's a lot of uh, controversy about Nike's numbers and – and, you know, is the stock failing and all of this stuff a few weeks ago. And what you, what I pay attention to is really the demand for the brand. So aside from this whole birth of wearable technology and the Nike fuel band, which I really think is the new, new in fashion, um, you also have their core product, which is Nike sneakers. So they just launched a new line called Supreme. Um, <laughs> they're called Foam Posits. They're 200 bucks a pop. And they launched them down on Lafayette Street. And basically, the NYPD had to come in and shut down the event and the street because there were so many people. Really? That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. So whenever that does happen, that just shows you the power of the brand and the power and the thirst for new premium luxury goods. And again, you can look at Nike you know, as an outdoor lifestyle you know, product, or you can look at it as a luxury brand like I do. So I look at Nike like Apple. Same thing. Really? Um, so that was something that was really interesting for me to, to see yesterday. Okay, so this nice, so Nike's coming off the highs uh, after its earnings here, consolidated a little bit. So you're, you put that in your bullish, uh, your bullish camp then, bullish luxury you know, retail. Band. Yeah, I am. I am bullish on Nike, and I think it's a great stock to hold. I think it's a phenomenally run company. I think that they really connect with their consumer and what they're doing with wearables. In addition, the customer service in their store, you don't expect it when you're going into basically, you know, a sporting goods store. And that's one thing out here that I've, that I've really noticed is the customer service is off the charts, which is very rare. You just don't expect that. Are you like uh, Brian Sazi? Do you go in there with your, your phone and taking pictures <laughs> and stuff and interviewing people? Or are you uh, you know, you're a little bit Brian. less covert? <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I'm, I'm very much less covert. Um, you know, I walk in, I do my channel checks. I don't necessarily – if I see something that's really tragic – um, I might post it on Twitter or I might send it to like a coterie of investors, but very rarely do I completely pimp out the store. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, last week we were talking about, uh, you know, some of these retailers and whatnot, uh, getting in like to the, uh, to the restaurant business. And you kind of thought that was a little bit of a, a no, no. Do you have any uh, follow up on, uh, the Brooks brothers steakhouse? Well, it's funny. Um, there was a really amazing article that came out in Women's Wear Daily, and that's kind of the, the retail merchandising Bible. It's a trade magazine. 
and um, they were interviewing their new CEO, who's Italian, and he actually bought the company from Marks and Spencer, which was a, a British retailer. And um, he was talking about the launch of the restaurant. So he happens to be a foodie. And he thinks that men in suits really need to have a place to eat steak and have meetings. And he's really excited about the opening of the steakhouse, you know, on uh, the New York property in Madison Avenue. Uh, And he also said something that I thought was very funny. He said, we don't pay attention to the business model. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) So that's a very Italian thing to say. We don't care. Um, So I just I find it funny whenever a CEO says anything remotely that funny. I definitely want to pay attention to the company and see what's happening. Okay. We don't uh, need any stinking business models. Yeah, yeah, no, (laughs) no, that's kind of the way we run things around here. No, just joking. Uh, Okay, and uh, Cold Water Creek bites the dust, huh? Yeah, I'm hearing that they're shutting their doors. Finally, it's like how much bloodletting can you possibly do? And um, Companies like Chico's, Cold Water Creek, et cetera, um, those are what we call in the fashion business the missy sizes, okay? So those are women of a certain age, uh, usually like between size 12 and like size 22. Not necessarily plus size, but just an older demographic (laughs) of female. I didn't think they went up. (laughs) Well, first of all, I thought this was the ice cream company. (laughs) I wish it was. It would be a lot better. But um, they've been struggling. And the thing that's funny, it's not funny, it's sad actually, but this is yet another sector of retail that's imploding right now. So, it, you know, as we're talking, you know, Jesus, Kristen, is anything doing well? What can I possibly sink my money into? Well, obviously, you want to avoid the teen space. They're imploding. The Missy space is imploding. So why is that? Why is that happening? Um, well, the, the first answer is that, you know, men 20 to 50 are exiting the workforce in droves. Right. Yep. Over 5 million men just quit looking for work. That's why you see a lot of daddies on the playground <laughs> these days. And that affects the teen space, and people don't really draw those connections. Uh, and then you look at the Missy space, too. So if their husbands are out of work or have taken early retirement, there's really no need to go out there and spiff up your wardrobe. Right. And that's what's happening. And so these stocks are reacting in kind, and this is where I do my research because you can actually see a proxy for what's happening with the middle class in seeing the performance of these stocks. Okay, and uh, just a follow-up, I know we talked about Gap stores a little bit uh, last week. It seemed to you know, stabilize a little bit. Uh, and what, what's your opinion on Gap stores? I, you know, ah, poor Gap. I really wish that fast retailing out of Japan, they actually uh, run the Uniqlo stores. I wish they would come in and buy them and just put them out of their misery. It's, it's another, like, a, you know, perishing American brand. Yes, they're you know trying to you know uh, expand their their lines with uh, Piper Lime and Athleta and all of these different angles, but I still think that they're just they can't resonate with the consumer, and it's sad because they had such a great basics line. You you could go into Gap and come out looking like a normal American person, you know you, they were very on trend, very classic, and then they got off trend. Now Old Navy stores are their biggest. Um, uh, line of real estate. So if they fix Old Navy, it would have, you know, you would have it that it would actually lift the stock. So they've been really pouring their money into Old Navy, except their ad campaigns just get weirder and weirder and weirder. <laughs> so I think they need to go with the new agency. Okay. All right. So we're coming up on the open here in a couple minutes. I just, uh, do you have, uh, you know, any, uh, any parting thoughts here for our listeners? Uh, you know, the market still seems to be trending higher. This retail is always just a really volatile sector. Is there, is there anything that's gotten beat up a little bit lately that, uh, that, you know, has drawn your interest on the long side? Jesus, I think everything pretty much has been beat up. Um, you know, the discounters have been beat up. Uh, luxury is still where you want to be. Something okay. that's very interesting, Saxon, uh, Neiman's, and Nordstrom are putting most of their retail dollars into off-price. So hmm. what does that tell you? If you're devoting all of your energy to off-price shopping, <laughs> very scary. So just watch that space. Okay. All right. We're a minute away from the open here, Kristen, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks a lot for uh, coming on this morning. Uh, we look I uh, look forward to having you on the show, talking about the retail sector. Thanks a lot. Thanks ha- so much, guys. Have, have a, a great day. Okay. Thank you.